evolution clearly shows that we are descendants from apes. The body is so intricate that it must have a designer and that designer must be God. At various places in the evolutionary process, there's big steps that couldn't overcome on its own, such as the creation of the first cell or the creation of the eye. I think that's where God steps in to help the process. Because every organ and everything that makes up our bodies is so beautifully fitted for its function, there must have been a designer, and God is just a name we give for the designer. Evolution has taken over three billion years, so of course there's plenty of time to get from primordial mud to us without the need to involve a God. I accept evolution, but I also believe in God. I think that evolution is a logical process, but I also believe that it was God's way of kick-starting everything. I believe that evolution was God's way of creating all life forms and how we end up in God's plan. God couldn't have used evolution to make mankind in his image because evolution uses random chance and therefore he had no way of knowing what he'd end up with. This is the theologian William Paley. He once advanced the argument that if you were out for a walk and you came across a watch lying on the ground, you would immediately know that this had not been formed spontaneously by natural processes. You know, watches are just far too complicated from that. They must have been designed by somebody. In the same way, everything about the human body is so beautifully suited to fulfil its function, apart from the uh, appendix, I suppose, uh, it must have been uh, designed that way. Hence, there must be a designer, a divine watchmaker. But then along came Darwin with his uh, theory of evolution, an alternative natural way of producing us. And there's no doubt that the evidence for evolution is strong. There's the, the fossil record, uh, tracing out how species developed. There are anatomical comparisons and also DNA comparisons. Not only that, but uh, evolution is taking place around us today. The way pests gain immunity from the insecticides designed to control them, that, that's an example of evolution. So as Jonathan says, Evolution clearly shows that we are descendants from apes. And the overwhelming majority of scientists go along with this. So, why do some people still have reservations about it? Well, it does seem to be a big leap to go from inanimate chemicals scattered over the surface of the Earth soon after the Earth formed to, or to, to this, and, and, and to me and you. This is where intelligent design comes in. This is what Alex advocates. He holds that evolution did take place, but only to a limited extent. At various places in the evolutionary process, there's big steps that couldn't overcome on its own, such as the creation of the first cell or the creation of the eye. I think that's where God steps in to help the process. Intelligent design is essentially a God of the gaps type of argument. By that I mean, now you point to something that science can't explain, well, it hasn't explained yet, and you say, well, there you are, science can't explain that. Why? Well, because God's doing that. Well, the problem with that type of argument is that over the passage of time, the gaps tend to get filled up, leaving God with less and less to do. But is such an intervening God necessary? Take the eye. OK, it couldn't have happened all at once, obviously, but could it have developed progressively in a number of small stages, each stage conferring some marginal survival advantage to the individual? Now, it could have started off with just a, a small patch of skin sensitive to light, you know, the beginnings of the retina, and that would register whether you've got a shadow, and, and that might indicate whether you are dealing with a predator, which would be a good sign that you should take avoiding action. That has survival value. But then suppose the sensitive patch found itself in a hollow, now that's good because depending on which side of the, the patch registers the shadow, that tells the direction from which the light is, is coming, and therefore the direction in which you should go in order to escape. That's a further advantage. But of course the trouble with hollows is that they tend to collect dirt. But then suppose Suppose one had a jelly-like 
substance forming in the hollow. Now that, that will keep the dirt out and still let the light in. And then if this jelly formed a bulge, you have essentially a lens. Now you no longer have a mere shadow, but you have an image on the sensitive patch. And an image will tell you whether indeed you are dealing with a predator or with prey. Uh, and so on, a whole series of, of small changes, each conferring a certain amount of uh, advantage. Now, there are many religious people, like Rachel, who are happy to go along with this. They accept that evolution got us all the way from primordial slime to where we are today. I believe that evolution was God's way of creating all life forms and how we end up in God's plan. But what of the objection raised by the other Rachel? God couldn't have used evolution to make mankind in his image because evolution uses random chance and therefore he had no way of knowing what he'd end up with. Random variations, unpredictable random mutations to the DNA coding. Some of the variations being advantageous, others not. It's then up to the process of natural selection, survival of the fittest, if you like, to preserve the advantageous ones and discard the others. But it's all based on chance. So how would a god using evolution know what he was going to end up with? Take a horse race. At the start, you can't be sure who's going to win. And yet, despite all the uncertainties, one thing you can be pretty sure about. The bookmaker, by the end of the day, will have achieved his purpose. He will have made a profit. Now, evolution is a bit like that. Sure, it involves uncertainties. You're, you're not going to be able to predict exactly what you're going to end up with, but certain general features are almost certain to arise. And this is known as convergence. Take the eye. There is survival advantage in being able to see, obviously, but animals have developed the ability to see in different ways. There is our camera-like eye, but there's also the very different compound eye of the fly. So start evolution all over again, and you're pretty sure to end up with creatures that somehow or other will be able to see. And you'll also end up with creatures that are intelligent. There's great survival value in being intelligent. So intelligence was also bound to emerge. So perhaps having discarded the divine watchmaker, it makes sense to think in terms of the divine bookmaker. One other thing. Religious believers, like, like myself, hold that there is something special about us humans. We have an immortal soul or spirit. The animals, they don't. But does that make sense? At what stage in the evolutionary process are we supposed to have acquired a spirit? Or did it suddenly pop in at some arbitrary stage? Or do believers have to start thinking in terms of an evolution of the spirit? A spirit evolving in parallel with the evolution of our bodies. A gradually developing awareness of God. So the questions we end up with are, is evolution on its own able to account for the development of intelligent life? If so, does that get rid of God? Or might we see God working through evolution?